So we're back with Jerry Mitchellick. And um, I got to ask, so what, what, what projects are you working on currently? Oh, the uh, record the record attempts with the AR. Okay, platform, gotcha. Yeah. Platform, yeah. Okay. Now, um, you meet a lot of people, I'm sure. What, what is the one question that people ask you the most? Here recently is how do I how do I get to be a sponsored shooter? <laughs> <laughs> I get a lot of a lot of uh, emails and stuff for that. Yeah. On the YouTube channel and questions like that. And I always tell them like what how how I got started. Shoot for 15, 20 years at every match you can possibly uh, shoot. Yeah. And if good enough, people recognize it and they might come your way. So what? it was hard when I started. I I financed and did everything myself. You know. Yeah. I still do a lot of it. So. Now, now, what do you think? How do you think things would have turned out for you if um, you started coming up shooting with the way things are now, or do you not see much of a difference in the way in the way the shooting world is uh, from a competition standpoint, cultural standpoint, uh, compared to the way it was before when you were coming up? I think it's easier now. Yeah, there's there's more money in it. Uh, gotcha. It's a lot more competitions to get into. Uh, it's a broader application of of everything. I mean, there's three gun, there's IDPA and USPSA. A steel challenge is just a multitude of matches not to make. Mm-hmm. When I first started, there wasn't hardly anything. So uh, a lot, lot more to choose from, a lot a lot different venues. So oh. really not a good excuse not to participate. <laughs> <laughs> so so um, you've designed several guns for uh, Smith & Wesson, am I correct? Yes. All right. And so are you, are you still currently designing? I've got some things in the back of my head that mm-hmm. I would like to see them make. I've got another couple of revolvers I'd like to see them produce. Uh, a, an AR style rifle, the modern uh-huh. sporting rifle. I've got some variations of that I'd like to see, you know, come into to come into form. Uh, that's a that's a platform that's constantly evolving. Gotcha. That that is what the 1911 style pistol was in in action shooting 25 years ago. Uh, the AR. Yes. Ah. Okay. With all the gadgets and gadgets and scopes and yeah. pieces. Parts, you know, when <laughs> up, uh, they didn't have the 2011s, which are the high capacity. And uh, so the single stack guns were, were in their prime. You know, we yeah. had a few guns just back then, uh, Swenson, Clark, and uh, Wilson got into it in, in the late 70s. And so there was a lot of innovation, a lot of product design. You know, Rob Latham and Brian Edis back then were just dominating everybody. And yeah. uh, so so the, the fun and the thrill of the game was just evolving. Uh, the AR is getting into that, that style of rifle and shooting uh, steel with 22 rifles like that or center fire like in three gun style. Yeah. And that's what I'm excited about. It's kind of a, a wide open spectrum of application and gadgets and gadgets and, and uh, just a lot of fun stuff yeah. going on. I, that's why I enjoy it. Do you think that maybe with the with the advent of all of these gadgets and all of the, the aiding uh, the, the aiding tools that are out there now? Um, do you think that's taking away from the natural ability of most shooters? Do you think it's become too easy to uh, accomplish some of the things you were doing years before without these things? Uh, some of the application with the sight, sighting systems have gotten easier, but it's still the guy behind the trigger. Yeah. That has to, has to com- you know, command himself under pressure. Uh, it helps evolve the different platforms really quick. Uh-huh. I've always said that the U.S. government would really want to advance their small arms program. They would make a million dollar prize and have a and just state the state the state the standard objectives of the of the match is yeah. what it has to do, and you'd have guys building and grinding on stuff in their garages and showing up with the most weird looking stuff. But then <laughs> you, things would progress. That's how things evolve. Yeah, you're right. You're totally right. I never even thought about that before. Because you're right. Now, all these guns that we shoot now evolve from competition. Mm-hmm. Uh, the training we do goes right into the military. Some of the top shooters are also top trainers. Uh-huh. Now, so not a, yeah, everything evolves. So, um, what do you think goes into? Because you like to shoot fast, I love to shoot fast. I have some friends who don't who care less to shoot fast. Um, right. What What do you think? And for, for me, it's just it was just it's just a natural tendency on my part to to want to be able to learn to shoot as fast as possible. Um, yep. what, what, what do you think separates people that cause someone like me who who's really inclined to wanting to shoot faster versus someone who tends to want to be a little bit more slow and deliberate? Um, you see how I like to make it sound so negative, shooting slow is? <laughs> well, I'm very envious of the, of the guys who shoot bullseye and PPC uh-huh. very well. Because that's a totally different discipline than I do. Yeah. And the guys are actually built different. 
if you talk to them, their mannerisms. Yeah. You see me on the range, I'm kind of jumpy. I'm, more, <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm just kind of spastic. I want to do stuff. Yeah. And these bullseye guys, they'll sit down, take a nap in between strings of fire, and they're just having a good time. I'm, <laughs> I'm keyed up. I'm, my adrenaline's pumping. I want to, I want to race. Yeah. So it's kind of a different personality thing. Uh-huh. I have a lot of respect for them. You know, it's just that it's a different level of performance. And yeah. Still, can, you know, still use the firearm, but it's totally different mindset, different outcome. Uh, but it's all shooting. So yeah, I don't. They're they some great bullseye guys. I, I, I couldn't even walk on the same range range with them. You know, yeah. I'm not built that way. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not either, man. I got to be honest with you. I, I'm the most schizophrenic shooter you've ever seen in your life. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm shooting one onto the next onto one. I'm, I'm like a child essentially, and um, I, but I love every minute of it. But I do. I wish I could bullseye shoot. I just don't think I have the patience for it. Um, it I think. Yeah, you I, have to be built that way. That's that internal clock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. You're right. I, I start getting real, real antsy and jittery. I'm just like, all right, God, can we shoot now? Jeez, I go to some courses sometimes, um, and we're going through about a thousand, two thousand rounds in three days, and I'm still like, right, can we, can we shoot? Enough with the talking. <laughs> yeah, I'm that kind of guy too. Yeah. <laughs> Learn about braille. <laughs> <laughs> so, how many rounds do you think you go through in a typical year? Yeah. Right now, I don't that much, 40, 50, 60. Yeah? Wow. Yeah. It's not all that much. When I was shooting really hard, it was that plus. I've uh, been on the road so much, so the three-gun stuff doesn't really require all that much round count, like yeah. steel shooting or something repetitive, like USPSA, uh, handgun nationals and stuff. You really have to train hard. Yeah. So like really with, hard. So like with steel shooting, because um, you, you did mention it's, in, it's a, a bit repetitive, um, are you shooting using your sights or is it more point shooting involved in that regard? It's both. Uh, uh-huh. that's it. You see, that's a topic that's really broad spectrum, uh-huh. uh, point shooting versus sighted shooting. Uh, actually on some of the close stuff, you don't use the sights all that much. Uh-huh. That's something you train at is how much attention do you have to pay to that? Okay. You know, you, sometimes you can look through the sights, you can look over the gun. It's a very close target, uh-huh. but you're still looking for what, qualifies as what's the expectation of that shot being fired at target. Gotcha. If it's an eight box and it's very small, well you have to pay attention even though it's three feet away. Yeah. If it's if it's a full size target, I just gotta put two any on two shots anywhere. Well I can relax my vision and just poke it in the middle of that target and mm-hmm. give it two out of there. So Okay. Now um is there any any advice that you can give to someone who can't get as much rain time with live fire? Um is there anything they can do off the range to help them improve their speed or, or is it pretty much restricted towards live fire where you're going to be at the most advantage in improving that? Some of the soft air stuff out there now is pretty spectacular. Uh huh. That wasn't available when I was shooting. It's kind of a new uh, item. Uh, it simulates the platforms very well of the Japanese shooter mm-hmm. that trained in airsoft in Japan. And he came here and he switched to a 38 super and he shot steel challenge and he beat us Whew. like three years. Wow. For three years, he came here and he dominated us. And all he did was dry fire and did a lot of soft air. And you had to really admire this just gentleman ability. And what I was really impressed with, not only did he hit the target, he hit it close to the center every time. <laughs> so I had a lot of respect for him. He came yeah. here and he showed us that, uh, hey, guys, I don't, have, you know, I don't even own a gun. I come over here and play with you. So oh, See, so all you guys out there making fun of all the airsoft guys out there? Yeah. See, yeah. See, me included. <laughs> very good, right? Yeah. But no, Jerry, thank you very much, man. It's, it's it's always a pleasure just just the wealth of knowledge that you have and just your ability to share it with with the, with the people the way you do. Um and then just being able to admire your ability altogether. I I absolutely love watching what you do. It's fun. Yeah, I, I can imagine that. And, and know what, you know what's crazy? I think that's what makes watching you even more fun. It's because you can tell that you're having a blast doing it. I can't think of a better job right now. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> but thank you very much, Jerry, man. And I hope you have a good one. Thank you very much for having me on. Thank you. <laughs> Will do. Thanks, man. Uh, that's going to be it for seeing live. Please join us again for another great episode.